Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to be looking at the 2024 hurricane season forecast. We're going to be going over every factor of this hurricane season from discussing this year's La Nina expected hurricane season, going over the 2024 names and going over a multiple different forecasts, including my forecast for this hurricane season now here we are looking at the inso status summary from the climate prediction center we have an inso alert system status of el nino advisory so we are still slightly in el nino but we do have la nina watch so as you can see this graph we have a middle line a middle line uh that is 0, 0.0 and this is neutral 0, 0.0 is neutral um within this kind of 0. Five area this is uh, considered a neutral phase uh, these blue dots is every observance of the current inso status as you can see from april 29th uh, we about entered a neutral phase around the end of april and then we started going downhill we reached 0, 0.0 around the middle of may and now we are still going downhill uh, soon to be into another La Nina, probably by late June. As you can see, that there's our current status right there. We are still in that neutral phase. But I do expect that La Nina probably by late June. And what does a La Nina mean for this hurricane season, you might ask? As you can see, here's a... graphic and uh from the eastern pacific you can see in that blue area you see fewer hurricanes due to strong vertical wind shear it's going to be cool and dry that's how we know if it's a la nina if it, we do have cooler sea surface temperature values coming from the south america area so overall this area of the east pacific is really going to see a below average hurricane season if this la nina does persist through the entirety of the hurricane season and as we head to the atlantic you see more hurricanes due to weaker vertical wind shear and trade winds as well as less atmospheric stability so we're going to see less shear. we're going to see uh, those hot temperatures we see hot temperatures pretty much every year nowadays across the atlantic for hurricane seasons uh, but we are going to see weaker vertical wind shear trade winds and less atmospheric stability uh, which we have seen uh, the most active hurricane season on record right now is 2020 and that was the la nina season we saw ida and hurricane ian uh, which was a Cat 4 and Category 5 hurricane in 2021 and 2022. Those were both La Nina years. So La Nina year, you're going to see a lot of hurricanes. You're going to see major hurricanes, probably with U.S. impacts. So this is why a lot of people are expecting an above average hurricane season. And this is the latest sea surface temperature anomalies for the Pacific. And around this general area is where we is where the INSO status is is observed and as you can see we are seeing a lot more cooler temperatures right now than above average temperatures so it is really starting to cool down over here uh, which is going to be leading to the la nina which we are expecting by late june or july and that will really spark this hurricane season uh, might this hurricane season might be off to an early start as uh we did already see a disturbance i think a week ago or two out in the middle of the atlantic so there's already activity starting up uh there's not much activity but we already saw something out in the atlantic in in the middle of may now current sea surface temperatures across the atlantic ocean we are starting to see some really hot temperatures showing up in the caribbean the gulf is pretty cool right now southern gulf of mexico though is starting to heat up uh, we really started to see the Gulf of Mexico really start to heat up around the end of June, uh, where we start seeing 29s and 30s throughout most of the Gulf. And then we start to see the East Coast starting to heat up probably by uh, late July. The main development region, as you can see right now, the eastern part of the main development region is very cold right now there is really not if there's any waves coming off of africa it's gonna be reaching very cool waters and high wind shear across the majority of the atlantic right now we have very high wind shear across this area so there's really not going to be any storms developing anytime soon until the shear moves out of the area and the eastern main development region warms up a bit the start of hurricane season is going to be june 1st 
Um, but as you can see, there's not going to be much developing anytime soon in terms of hurricanes. September is the month of the peak hurricane season. Uh, this is showing your uh, likely and most likely tropical tracks. So this is including tropical storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes. As you can see, uh, from the main development region, we have waves that come off of Africa, and these are called tropical waves. These head westward into very warm waters and develop over time heading westward. Now, once it reaches the Caribbean area, uh, these storms could really head anywhere. It depends on the Bermuda High as well as jet streams. So uh, as these winds could carry the storm uh, really anywhere because of these winds. And this makes storms typically uh, very hard to forecast. Uh, we do have scenarios where it makes uh, the forecasting these storms directions very easy. But so in some cases, it could be a last minute decision on where these storms could be making landfall. Most likely tropical tracks for September is going to be in the eastern Caribbean going up northeast. This is as if the Bermuda High is a lot more east and this is going to carry those storms a lot more north towards Bermuda. Now say if this Bermuda High was a lot more west, uh, it's going to be carrying these storms a lot more through the Caribbean and potentially into the Gulf of Mexico. Looking at those 2024 Atlantic storm names, we have Alberto Barrel, Chris, Debbie, Ernesto, Francine, Gordon, Helene, Isaac, Joyce, Kirk, Leslie, Milton, Nadine, Oscar, Patty, Raphael, Sarah, Tony, Valerie, and William. And looking at the Weather Channel's hurricane forecast, so this also includes NOAA's forecast and CSU's forecast. For NOAA, we have 17 25 named storms, 8 to 13 hurricanes, and 4 to 7 major hurricanes. And to put this into perspective, the average uh, for these are 14 named storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. So NOAA's forecasting a very above average season. The Weather Channel's forecast has 24 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and 6 major hurricanes. Again, above average. And CSU has 23 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and 5 major hurricanes. Looking at my overall forecast map that you saw in the thumbnail, in the main development region, you can see in the red, that's the main development region where all those tropical waves are. I'm expecting a lot of waves this season, a lot more than normal, especially compared to last year. Uh, we're going to see a lot of waves and uh, more waves it means more potential. So a lot of these waves are going to be heading to the Caribbean. A lot of these waves are going to be heading north away from the Caribbean and the United States. There's going to be a lot of potential uh, with these waves this season, uh, which definitely worries me for the Caribbean because the Caribbean is kind of in the middle there, um, uh, which if these storms head into the Caribbean just a little bit, it could bring impacts to areas like Dominican Republic, Haiti, uh, Jamaica, Cuba, U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, Bahamas, and then head northward. Uh, if this heads, if these storms head even more west, it could impact areas like Mexico and Central America. And it, uh, if those conditions are just right, it could lead it into the Gulf, which could lead to big U.S. impacts. So that's why I have those tons of waves. If we look in this pink area, I have it very active. I feel, I definitely think we're going to be having a very active season for the portions of the Caribbean, Central America, and the Gulf of Mexico. I expect um, a few Gulf storms, more than average of what the Gulf typically sees. I do also expect the East Coast to see a little more storms than average this season. And then we have in the yellow a few storms. I think the Northeastern coast will see a few storms, nothing directly impacted, but as these storms head northward, you're going to see definitely some remnants and maybe a couple of strong storms as we head later throughout the season. Now, my personal forecast, I have 22 named storms. So this is going to be very similar to the other forecast that we just went over. I have 22 named storms, 12 hurricanes. So that's definitely pushing it for the hurricanes, but the, we're going to see very warm waters. We're going to see low wind shear. So that's why I have more hurricanes than usual. 
And then we have five major hurricanes. We're definitely going to see some major hurricanes this season. Hopefully not impacting land, um, but we're definitely going to see those major hurricanes uh, this season compared to last season. Last season was pretty active for a El Nino season. And that's because it was the warm, very warm waters. Um, we still had a lot of wind shear out west. That's because of the El Nino. So that's why we didn't have uh, really any major U.S. storms uh, last season. But we still had 20 named storms, 7 hurricanes out in the Atlantic. So still an active season for El Nino. I hope you enjoy, did enjoy the hurricane forecast for 2024. As always, take this with a grain of salt. Anything can happen with this hurricane season. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, share this video with any friends or family, and as always, stay safe.